In this video, I'm going to be giving you a strategy guide on how to unlock the Nebula Camo for Black Ops 6 Zombies. This is going to require a lot of playing and a lot of progress and doing specific things. So stay tuned and let's get through it. So this is what it looks like. You can see it goes from pink and reddish to like a purpley blue and green. Very nice looking skin. Now you'll only be able to unlock this during the Black Ops 6 Zombies modes and you'll see it's the final camo unlocked which you will have to complete everything before it before you can even begin to, you know, work towards this. In this video I'm going to take you through step by step on how I unlocked each version of every camo. You can expect about 100 to 150 hours of work put in before you can achieve this. Now you're going to have to do this progress for 33 weapons. 33 unique weapons, right? And our first progress is getting the purple tiger camo. This one is probably the most simple to do, but it's going to take the longest amount of time. Essentially, you need to get 2000 critical kills, which means 2000 headshot kills. They have to die from the headshot. And you have to get this on all 33 weapons. You can exclude the sniper rifles and do the melee weapons instead. That is what I did. I didn't bother with the sniper rifles. You should know that you don't have to get headshots with the melee weapons, you just have to get 2,000 kills. This is the same for the launchers with the explosions. You don't have to get headshots with those, you just have to get 2,000 kills. The only other weapon that might be a problem is the pistol GS45, because when you pack a punch this, this uh, does explosive damage and kills your enemies. So getting headshots with this is very difficult, and you will have to instead not pack a punch it, and rather raise it to legendary difficulty and play lower rounds, but I will explain shortly. So in your play menu, we're going to go select mission. We're going to go into directed mode. This is going to cap rounds at a maximum of 15, which is great, which means we can get strong, get money and farm kills for a very long time. So in directed mode, go here and play solo. And if you can get the 2000 headshots on any map, but I'm going to show you a nice location to do it on Liberty Falls, where you can kind of just camp in a really safe place and just grind for hours. <laughs> now, the best location to go to farm is going to be along this way. So we're going to go through the left door through the bowling alley, and then we're going to go through the actual bowling alley door over here, head to the bank on the right hand side through this door. So right over here, you're not going to open up the bank door. Don't open it, right? We're going to do a special little like purchase here. We're going to buy the zip line, go up. Then we're going to go to this little locked wooden thing. We're going to explode it. Make sure you have at least 2,500 essence before jumping down here. You should also note that there is a perk machine over here to buy all eight perks. Don't buy the pink one. It's going to kill zombies on your behalf, which is going to make you take longer. As soon as you jump down from this ledge that you've opened, look at this window, crouch or even lie down. You should see a locked door sign like this for 500. Go ahead and unlock it then going to go ahead and jump down here into this like alleyway and then immediately go back to the gas station open up this door for 1500 and you'll see that you can go through this ice cream store on the right hand side which lets us into the bank which is really cool because that is one of the only entrances because this door is locked and the door at the other side is locked as well the zombies can only get through this window and the door that we came through over here so if we go ahead and stand next to the vault like this You'll get them to funnel in in a straight line down here and it's great to just, you know, shoot them like this for, you know, rounds and rounds. And because you're grinding so much money, you're welcome to pack a punch to level three as, as high as you want as whatever you need as necessary. I personally recommend progressing the quest without ending it, without doing the boss and just getting to round 15, the round 15 cap unlocked. And then you'll get 44 zombies every single round and you can just stand here headshotting them over and over. Great thing about this is you can always hit escape, save and quit, hit save, and this will actually save your progress. If you want to come back later, you just go select mission, go save file and select your save and you will load in from where you left off and just continue farming. Doing this method should take you around an hour to get 2000 headshots with most weapons, you know, excluding some of the ones that are a bit more gimmicky like rocket launchers and knives and melee weapons. And just repeat this process until you get 2000 headshots on 33 weapons. After you accomplish the 2000 headshots, you will unlock the two special challenges. Now these are unique for every single weapon, like get 300 eliminations with the GS45 in rarer or higher quality. So blue or higher quality, which is really easy to do or in hip fire. Now this one is another one of the gimmicky ones. Hip fire for this one doesn't let you count for some reason when you have a Kimbo. So you will have to swap to using as, you know, one pistol instead of the dual pistols because Akimbo doesn't track properly. So I don't know why. 
Some of the other challenges might be to like, you know, defeat enemies while you have Napalm Burst or Dead Wire, you know, as an ammo mod on your weapon. You also have some challenges where you have to defeat like 30 Parasites, 30 Vermin. Of course, for Parasites, you need to do the Terminus map. For Vermin, you have to do Liberty Falls. Generally, these are quite straightforward and I recommend tracking them before you do your 2000 kills because right after 2000 kills, you can do that and then move on to Mystic Gold. Now for Mystic Gold, you need to get 10 kills rapidly 15 times and this is super easy this is what it looks like by the way the mystic gold very nice looking color i'm not gonna lie like with the the black in between now to get 10 kills rapidly it is super easy honestly you just get to round 15 and you just shoot the enemies as they're coming to you during the bank trust me it's rapid enough that it will count it's also a pretty easy challenge to do because you basically just have to kill 150 enemies and it should take you like, what, 10 to 15 minutes? I think 15 minutes, give or take, is a, is a good estimate of how long it should take between each weapon. Now, once you've unlocked Mystic Gold, the next one up is the Opal. Now, to unlock Opal, you have to get Mystic Gold on every weapon in that weapon type. So this is an SMG, so I need all the SMGs on Mystic Gold before you can even try unlocking the Opal. Opal will stay locked until you have Mystic Gold on every single weapon. So if you want to do assault rifles you have to do mystic gold on every single assault rifle same for the smg same for the shotguns lmgs marksman's rifles launchers pistols and the melee weapons now once you do unlock the challenge for opal all you need to do for this challenge is defeat 30 special zombies manglers and i believe abominations count for this so if you get those you kill those they count but 30 is a lot so we've got a special little grinding technique to get them a lot quicker now for this method, we specifically cannot go past the round cap of 11. So when you get to the church, you're going to go in here. You are not going to interact with that machine. Do not touch it. You can use the Pack-a-Punch. You can unlock every other door in the entire, you know, map if you want to. But do not interact with that machine because if it goes past round 11, you're going to make your grind very, very slow. Now we're still going to be using the same bank location to grind the zombie kills and we have to get to round 11. Now there is a little bit of a trick here, is that once you do get to round 11, usually you should go into a vermin round. Now when this happens, this means you need to clear the round. So go ahead and defeat all the vermin, collect the max ammo as a marker to show that the round has ended. Wait just a few seconds, right? Just give it a little bit of time. What we're going to be doing here is hitting the escape key and we're going to go to save and quit, right? So it's loaded the new round, we're saving and quitting, Go back to the main menu and quite simply, we're just going to load back in. Select mission, save file, pick our save file, and we're going to go straight back in. Now, if you do get a vermin round yet again, you're going to repeat the process. You're going to kill all the vermin and then wait for the next round and then hit save and quit to do it again. But if you get straight up zombies, this means you've done it right. It well, or you just got lucky enough because sometimes it is just unlucky that you get the vermin round. But you will see a mangler will spawn every single round now. So you'll go through all the enemies here. You'll see that I'm standing over here this time i find it's just easier for me to dodge the mangler attacks or at least sometimes dodge them and you'll see you can go ahead and defeat the manglers obviously you need to defeat them 30 times but with this method you will see that you will get a mangler every single round so it's the quickest way and it typically took me about 25 minutes to 30 minutes for every single gun to you know defeat the 30 rounds of this you'll see here as the next round starts you'll see it repeats the process mangler always at the back left corner if you're in this room if you leave and you go you know pack a punch and get ammo or something the mangler might spawn outside but either way just come back to this room and keep fighting them as you've been doing so you should also know that every time you kill the mangler they're going to drop a little bit of an ammo box so for the most part you can actually just keep refilling your ammo from them directly so that you don't have to leave if you do want to take a break you can always save and quit and continue later you can also use the mystery box to change weapons you know so that you don't have to keep setting up now the next camo after opal is afterlife and you can only do afterlife when you have opal on 33 weapons this is what afterlife looks like pretty cool one of you know one of the better camos obviously it's like the second last one the one before nebula it's a really cool camo, I'm not gonna lie, it's, it's a pretty fun one. It's also one of the easiest ones to get because all you have to do is kill 20 enemies consecutively without taking any damage. So that's 200 kills without being damaged. Just get 200 kills without being damaged. Super simple. Now for every other weapon, this should take you about five to six minutes to get 200 kills. 
But for the melee weapons, it's a little bit more tricky because getting 20 kills with a melee weapon without taking any damage is a little bit more specific on how you need to play, which I will show you. For every other weapon though, you just have to kill 200 enemies without taking damage. Honestly, it's the easiest challenge ever. I also recommend using a double XP token because every time you do this, you're going to get 7,500 XP. And with double XP, that becomes a lot. And doing all of that at once, trust me, I was still prestige seven yesterday. So you can tell. It took me about three and a half hours to get all of my weapons onto afterlife camo. So it's, it's generally really quick. It's harder to actually just get the guns from the mystery box, to be honest. For the melee weapons, you're going to want to go into a fresh solo Liberty Falls, and you're not going to buy any of the doors. You're not going to leave. You want to let the round cap stay at three. And what you want to do is either run quickly into the zombies or stab them or bait their attacks. Like when they attack, they can't attack again. So you kind of like let them attack, move backwards. After they attack, run in and stab them. So let them attack and then stab. Let him attack and then stab. And you just have to get 20 kills in a row without taking any damage. It's going to take you, uh, a, you know, a good like half an hour per weapon, to be honest, for melee weapons. It's it's probably where the, the most work is required because if you get hit once, you have to start again to count to 20 to get your, you know, your afterlife. Now you'll be happy to know that the knife and the drill still one shot enemies on round three. So you'll be fine here for the knife and the drill. You're good. For the baseball bat, however, you have a bit of a problem. This is because the baseball bat is going to require two hits to kill zombies. But if we go ahead and we use this gobble gum for hidden power, if you do have it, trust me, save it for this exact moment where you have to do the baseball bat. When you're holding the baseball bat and you consume this gobble gum, it will make the baseball bat legendary rarity. And that means you can one hit kill zombies so that it's going to be so much easier. And the baseball bat has a bigger range than the drill and the knife. So it's actually going to be easier in this sense. But that's how I did it. And like I said, it took me about half an hour for each melee weapon to get my 200 kills without being damaged in between. I ended up doing like 300 kills with each weapon because I got hit sometimes. It happens. Now, in order to unlock Nebula, you need Afterlife on 33 weapons. So all the weapons you got to Opal, you now have to get them to Afterlife, which means you can finally do Nebula, which is a bit of a strange challenge. It's it's not as difficult as like getting 2000 headshots, though. But it definitely is going to require a little bit of a setup, but it is definitely farmable. And I'm going to show you how. So to get Nebula, you need 10 elite zombie eliminations. These are things like Nathan or named manglers. I'm going to show you how to get them consistently so that you can form one each round. First, you're going to have to progress the main story of the Liberty Falls. So interacting with the machine, getting the tool shed key, opening up the storage shed, getting the handbrake, going down here to the flower shop, getting the water valve. Honestly, directed mode is going to tell you what to do. You have to do the water valve here in the bowling alley, pick up the gauge, create a mangler cannon if you don't have one, break through the electronic store, find the electrical wiring, craft the jet gun, use the jet gun to collect the three devices across the map, lost one in the church. Once you've done so, craft the LTG on the rooftop in the middle of the map, go back to the church. This time you're going to pick up a canister here, you're going to put it on the trap in the middle of the map, and then you're going to activate the LTG at the graveyard next to the church, protect the portal from the enemies when the abomination comes out, get it low HP, activate the trap and kill it in the trap while the canister is in that trap as well. Bring the canister back to the machine, pick up the Strauss counter, do the three collaborations of the three machines. This will then activate the final container over here. We're not going to actually use this. We'll place it here in the trap, but we are done there. Collect the LTG from the graveyard if you didn't before, and then now you're going to place it in the one that is located near the gas station. And this again, protect the portal for 60 seconds from the enemies. This time you only have to do this portal once. You only have to protect it once. That's the lucky part about this. As soon as this one's done, it'll bring a mangler enemy out. I find these are easier to kill. Just shoot them in the head until the helmet pops off. Keep shooting them in the face. They will die. After the round ends and you kill all the zombies, you can activate it again. This time there's no portal to protect it. It will spawn immediately and you can go ahead and kill it again. Essentially, these are your elite zombies. So kill this 10 times. Essentially, you're going to play through 10 rounds. I recommend basically killing the elite, going into this room over here like we have been. 
This lines up all the zombies in a really nice way that you can clear them out really quickly so that you can, you know, melt them and get to the next round because you can only activate activate that LTG once you're in a new round of the zombies. So once all the enemies stop, go back outside again and you'll see you can interact with the LTG after a few seconds. It's glowing red now. Give it a couple more seconds as the new round starts and you will see that you can engage with it again and press the button. So... It should be a new round, and there we go. LTG, activate, and repeat this process 10 times until you unlock Nebula on your gun. And that's quite simply how this grind works. Do you recommend guns of rare quality and at least pack a punch two times? If you have something stronger than that, great. That is how you can unlock Nebula. And again, this is what it looks like. It's pretty cool. I hope you guys enjoyed. Good luck on your grind. Let me know how far you are right now, and thanks so much for watching.